couple more settings that I want to cover. And these are settings that are going to be more on the management side as you're setting up your label. They're a view independent setting, a view readable setting, and a dynamic justification setting. So the first one I want to talk about is view independent. When you create your labels, if you have that view independent option enabled, when you rotate a view, that text will stay in the orientation that it was in the view. So in this case, those top labels, the ones above the point, were created with that option enabled. So notice on the right side, after I rotated the view, that text is still horizontal. If I have view independent disabled and you rotate the view, the text is going to rotate with the view. So we see on the right side, as I've rotated the view, that piece of text has rotated. Depending which behavior you're looking for out of your labels, you can control that. And that is a setting that is stored with the label. So when you set them up in your libraries and you save that label, it's going to behave that way consistently. You're not going to have to worry about remembering, oh, which setting do I need for this label? You can just define a couple labels and you're good to go, however you need them to work. The second setting is view readable. Again, the labels on the top of the line are enabled. The two labels on the bottom of the line are disabled. So when we have it enabled and we place this label, it's automatically rotated this label 180 degrees so that it is readable from the bottom or the right side of the view. If that option is disabled, that label would have been created literally as it was defined, even though the curvature of the geometry at that point causes the label to read upside down from the bottom or the right side of the sheet. And the third option that I want to cover here is what's called dynamic placement. And what this does is overrides or does an auto justification, a left right justification, depending on the placement of the label. So the two labels at the top are enabled, the two labels at the bottom are disabled. So notice that this label was set up, first of all, with a left justification for the text. So notice that this top label here. Even though the justification for that text was left, when auto text justification was enabled and I placed the label and I was connecting my leader to the right side, it automatically swapped it and right justified the text in that label. When this option was disabled, that text was placed still left justified, even though the leader was coming off the right side. So you have full control over that. And all three of those settings, I'll say it again, are stored with your label. So you set it up, it's always going to work that way. Now this last bit, I'm going to go through very rapidly. I don't expect you to read all this, but you will have the recording and we will be able to share this information out. If you get into setting up labels, there's kind of a hierarchy and there's a bunch of different parts that make up the label. This is basically describing that hierarchy of what controls the display of the label. So for example, the text elements, how do I control what the color and the level of that text is? Um, the primary way to do that is to control it in an element template. That's option one. And option two is to control it through your text favorites. Those are the primary two re ways that you would generally do this. And that's why I've got them in a slightly different color. Now, if you don't do either of those, there are other things that happen all the way down to using active settings. So this is kind of that whole hierarchy of what happens if you don't have them defined. But if you're defining them, you're probably going one of these two ways. Moving on to the next component of the label, the frame and the, the, the uh, splitter bar that's in there. Generally, you're going to want to set that up in your element template. And that's where you're going to control your levels and line styles and such. There are other options of two and three as it defaults back to some actives if you don't have it in your element template. And then the next section I want to talk about is the extension line and the leader. Now this one gets a little more complicated because it starts tying into some of the dimension settings if you want. Um, so it can pull parts of this out of the dimension style. That's typically probably where you're going to set it up at. But if you don't have it set in the dimension style, it can also pull it from your element template. So again, a little bit of flexibility on where you're pulling those color styles and weights from. There can be advantages to putting it in the dimension style or in your element template, 
just how depending on how you're trying to manage your overall workspace and how you're trying to reuse those components. This is again that same part of the element. Levels are a little bit different in here in the way they're treated, but they can be defined in the dimension style or they can be defined over in the element template or there's some other backup defaults that get used if they're not defined. And lastly is the arrowhead. You know, where is the terminator defined? Well, that's a, a defined in the dimension styles too. That's where you're going to go set. What does that arrowhead look like? How is it sized? That's all being picked up out of a dimension style. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.